Are you looking to ignite inspiration and elevate your next event? Whether it's an in-person or virtual gathering, I'm here to make it unforgettable. Hi, I'm Emily Russell, and I bring a blend of warmth, high energy, and authenticity to every stage. As a keynote speaker, I dive deep into embracing authenticity, leading with love, and stepping into your power. My talks focus on aligning with your inner knowing, harnessing the power of community, and breaking free of limitations to help you and your audience thrive. If you're seeking an engaging workshop host, let's create magic together. I specialize in setting aligned goals, vision boarding, and building meaningful connections that last long after the event ends. Need an MC to keep the energy high and the day flowing seamlessly? I've got you covered. With my knack for adding that wow factor, I ensure that your event is not just memorable, but transformative. Customized to fit the unique needs of your event, my approach is all about tuning into your audience and delivering an experience that resonates. Don't miss out on making your next event truly special. Reach out today at the email listed in the show notes and let's create something extraordinary together. Hi friends, welcome to Gather and Growth, a show for the leaders, thinkers, doers, and dreamers from rural communities and beyond. I'm your host, Emily Rushel. On this podcast, we defy expectations, bust through limiting beliefs, and ask the big questions to better understand this beautiful world and the people in it. This is your space to heal, grow, evolve, get curious, and build empathy bridges to truly transform from the inside out. Grab yourself an iced coffee and let's dive in. Hey friends, welcome back to Gather and Grow. Today I am joined by Leah McLeod, who has been on the podcast before, way back when. Literally, I went and checked the date almost two years ago to the day. Like we recorded, right now it's October 8th. The last time we recorded was October 18th, which is so weird. Crazy. <laughs> because we actually were talking earlier this summer about recording and then kind of got pushed back because of a few things that we'll get into here. And so the fact that we're reunited just feels oh so right. I Welcome know. back, Leah. I know. It feels so good to be here. And I know so many of your community came into my community and even enrolled in some of my courses and did readings with me. So I feel like I know a lot of your girls, you know? I've gotten to know so many people that you've cultivated or attracted and then they've come into my world. So I just, I mean, first, I just want to say thank you because I don't know, it's just been amazing. And I'm just happy to be back here and talking about human design because there's so many things you can talk about with human design. There's so many little avenues and places to go. So happy to to be back. Yeah. Well, and you know so much more than you did two years ago. And as with that, like, I think both of us, our journeys have evolved so much since then that there's way more depth an understanding to what we're even bringing to this conversation than we were two years ago. So if anyone hasn't listened, pause here, go back, and then you could see side by side how much we've changed. Well, and I was just telling Emily before we jumped on, I said, I think the last time we recorded, you were in a closet. (laughs) And now she's in an office with a beautiful sunset background. And we were just saying like, it's just crazy what's changed. I know two years ago, I definitely wasn't where I am right now either. So pretty cool. Well, let's start there. What brought you into this work and what has changed over the last two years? What do you know now that you didn't know then? Oh my. Okay. So it's 2024. So 2022, that was when I just started doing this full time. So prior to doing human design, I worked with the corporate career. I know a lot of what you do. and, And I don't know if this is still your avenue of, you know, your main audience, but I know it's a lot around like showing rural women that you can have more in life. And I grew up in a rural town right outside of Toledo, Ohio, Southeast Michigan. And I went to college in Ohio and then moved back home. I lived in Toledo and and I had a job at, you know, this big fortune 500 company that basically, you know, in like smaller cities, there's like, you know, the one or two companies that like are kind of the main thing, you know, Mm -hmm. and I worked at like the big one. And so, you know, big part of my story is kind of breaking free from that because so many people, in my life, I was very conditioned by the, oh, wow, you've got the, you, you're, you work here and wow, like you've really made, I think my parents had a lot of pride around, you know, the career I sort of built for myself and I did too, but ultimately like, you know, big part of my story is just feeling unfulfilled in that position and 
feeling like I had this golden handcuff to my hometown that, you know, I had this great career and this making all this money and da 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 and all these things. And it looked really good on paper, but I just ultimately felt like I was meant for more. So, you know, there's a lot of pieces and parts to the story, but we'll keep it short here today because I bet we dove into a lot of that in the first episode. If we didn't, you know, I have a podcast as well, which I just discontinued, but I have episodes on that too. But the short of it is that I ultimately like found human design, or as I like to say, human design found me. I thought it would be something I did on the side because I was always very spiritual. And I thought, you know, this would be something that I dove into, yeah, just for fun, honestly, (laughs) just to bring to, you know, wine with girlfriends or, you know, then that kind of evolved. So maybe I'll just do this on the side in my evenings or on the weekends. And then, you know, slowly but surely it was like this big sort of domino effect into what today is now a really successful business doing human design. So back in 2022, when we talked, March of that year is actually when I left my corporate position. So that was hard. It was it was like a big jump for me, but it, it, I knew it was right. And so I jumped and started doing human design. And at that time, I was doing readings predominantly. And then I sold something called the chart summary, mm-hmm. which basically was a summary of your human design chart. And then I... I started doing one-on-one mentorship, kind of teaching people human design, just a few people just that found me on the internet and wanted to learn from me. And then since then, it has been a whirlwind. I went on to start a podcast. So I, I was ended up being like pretty frequently in the top 100 for spirituality. And I just actually ended my podcast last August, so just a couple months ago just because of just time commitments and just new things I'm working on. Because from that point, then I went on to kind of redo my chart summaries and I changed them into something called the Human Design Guidebook. I started teaching human design. I have now 163 students all over the world. My students are now readers on my site. I still do one-on-one readings here and there, but predominantly they're kind of doing readings now. And I am building a human design app that comes out next year and I just finished last week my manuscript for a book I'm writing with ah. the books on human design. So yeah, so lots of changes. And it's really, I'm really glad you asked what's been happening in the past couple of years, because to be completely honest, I don't think I take enough time to reflect on how much things have transpired in a short period of time. Because I'm in it, you know, I'm here every day and you know, up all night and just in the work and it's, I love it. And so I kind of forget that it's feels like I've been doing this forever, but it, it really only has been just a few years. Yeah. Well, and just reflecting back two and a half years ago, you were considering the unknown of what it would look like on the other side of your corporate job. And here we are today, however many podcast episodes later, however many students having worked with you later, so many impressions on social media. And I don't just mean from a metric standpoint, but in people that you are touching, like, I don't think that there's a single group message I'm in where I don't end up seeing one of your posts Oh, in my there. God. No way. Oh yeah. And a book written and so much more. And so I think so many of the women in this circle, you know, are approaching the unknown, considering what's it going to look like on the other side of this leap. And whether that's in career or health or family or something else, like we have this vision of what's possible, but it feels scary or different or far away. And our goals have such an interesting relationship with time because I think sometimes things take longer than we anticipate that they will. And then all of a sudden you wake up and you're like, how did I do all that in two years? Yeah. Yeah. My I, I had a wise skip level boss a couple of years when I worked in my that corporate career who used to say, we overestimate how much we can get done in a year, but we underestimate how much we can get done in five years. And I never really understood it, but I do now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I want to rewind for a second. For anyone who is coming into this for the first time, what is human design? Yeah. So human design is a self-awareness modality to understand, you know, how your design, how your energy works in your body. It is a tool to understand, you know, the energy you have and how you can use that energy in your daily life to optimize it for peak performance, to make decisions, 
And it even goes as far into understanding, you know, what gifts you have, how your personality operates, what your digestion is, how you digest food and information, the environments you thrive in, your purpose, and so many things. Really, there's like so many pockets to it, which, you know, you could talk about so many corners of human design forever. But ultimately, like I'm working with people oftentimes who there's a lot of people. So like one, there's people who are interested in understanding just an, another layer of themselves. Like if you're into self-help modalities, that's how I actually got into it. I love the Enneagram and you know the Myers-Briggs and I loved astrology and just like all the little modalities. Like I love learning about myself ultimately because I always felt a little bit different. And so I wanted to know why. So human design is really great for those people who just want to know that, but it's also a really great tool for business owners, for people who are ready to reduce the friction in their lives, get out of their own way, start living a life that feels really good to them, that feels like it's flowing rather than roadblock after roadblock. I work with people who are in big transitions, parents who want to understand their kids better, kids who want to understand their parents better, mm-hmm. teams, you know, relationships, co-founders, all sorts of avenues. But that's what human design is and that's who it can help. So cool. No, I know a topic of conversation that's been hot in some of my, you know, entrepreneurial friend groups is how do we really align our businesses with our human design? Because there's a million coaches and gurus who say, launch this way, do this, like post this many times a day, like build this funnel. And it can be so overwhelming. And the biggest permission slip that I have given myself is understanding my human design and how that translates to the work I do as a business owner. Now, we do have a lot of entrepreneurs listening, but I think the advice you're going to give relates to whatever your career or life path has in store. But yeah. like, what do we, you know, we, we get the human design chart. How do we use it as entrepreneurs? Yeah. Re- like you said, reduce that friction. Yeah. Well, in all the ways, really. So with human design, you're understanding your energetic blueprint, right? So like, if you look up your chart, you'll see this very mechanical looking thing. And I don't know if if you share a video, but like, you know, here's what one looks like. And this is my little whiteboard that I use to teach. (laughs) But essentially, you know, that's your blueprint. So it kind of looks like a human underneath it. Sometimes even when you look it up, you'll see like a shadow of a person behind it. But it's really saying like these are the energy centers in your body and a combination of which centers are activated or like we say defined within your chart that shows you, okay, the energy you bring to the world. And then there's parts of your chart that, you know, aren't activated, which is what energy you feel. So we can really leverage your human design to see how do you get into that flow state? How do you work with your energy in the most aligned way? And so you know, the first thing that is the most important part of diving into human design is looking up your chart and getting your energy type. There's five different energy types. We have manifestors, generators, manifesting generators, projectors, and reflectors. And each of our energy types speaks to the kind of energetic gift we bring, our aura, or aka how our, our energy feels to other people. And we also have a strategy, which is like how you can work or strategically, you know, align with your energy to bring in aligned opportunities. We also can see with your energy type, we know if you're in alignment or out of alignment with something called a signature theme and a not self theme. I call those the alignment themes. So you can see like where you are, where you are working with it and where you're not. So if you'd like, Emily, I can dive into each of the five types if you want, and we can talk a little bit deeper about that. Absolutely. And I, I know it's kind of hard to talk in hypotheticals. So I just Instagram message you my chart if you want to pull from examples. Oh, yes, I was just thinking that. Feel, I was talking. I was feel, like, <laughs> feel free to use me as a guinea pig. I know it's hard to be like, well, in this one particular situation that I'm trying to recall off the top of my head. Right. It's like, yeah, there's, and there's so many layers to it too. And not to complicate things because a big part of, I think my, I guess, place in human design has been being really being someone who makes it really practical, you know? So yeah. So like when we look at our energy type, so that's the first piece again. So you could be a manifester, a generator, a manifesting generator, projector, or reflector. And we'll just go down the line. So we'll start with manifestors. So manifestors in business, particularly, they're kind of like the initiators. I call them the fire starters. They're people who are here to kind of create movements, really make an impact. One of the things that 
manifestors, you know, kind of struggle with is they feel like they can't be as big and bold as they want to be. Their energy, it leaves an impact. It's they walk into a room and you can feel them. And so for manifestors, they oftentimes feel like they can't be as big as they want and that they don't have the freedom to do the things they want to do because they want to go quickly and they want to, their energy is like, they get these creative bursts of ideas from the universe and they want them to, they want them to happen right now and they want to go after them. And so you often hear the quote from Nike, you know, just do it. And so for manifestors, that's really their quote. They, they can just do it. And the rest of us, not so much. And we'll dive into those mechanics, but when a manifester is operating in alignment, they're going to feel lots of peace, feeling really calm, like they can do what they want when they want. And when they're out of alignment, they can feel super angry. But their strategy of how they can work with their energy to avoid the anger is to really inform people of where they're going and what their plans are because they get these creative ideas. And since they want to go after them and, and see them through, they oftentimes feel like telling people what they have going on is going to stop them and that they're going to, it's going to complicate things when really like their lesson is to unapologetically tell people mostly who's impacted by their plans, what they're doing. So as a business owner, this could be, you know, if you're starting something new and you have a team or you have a business partner, let them know, keep them informed, create open lines of communication. If you work with a manifester, also a really great tip is to inform them to again, create that open line of communication. Another great way for manifestors in business to work is to know that telling people actually gets them to where they want to go quicker because based on their energy dynamics, they have their, they kind of operate in cycles where they don't always have energy to go after the things that they want to go after because they don't have this built in sacral life force energy that like a generator would have, which we'll talk about in a second. So it's good for them to tell people so that people can get on board. I always describe manifestors as bus drivers. If we're on our path of alignment, aka we're like living our most aligned life, we're on a road and they're kind of on this road driving and maybe they're on the bus and they they go to the bus stop and they say, hey, you know, this is where we're headed. And maybe it's all the other types like a projector, a generator, manifesting generator, reflector. And there's going to be someone that says, no, well, you know, I'll get on the bus, but can we go this way? Or, you know, can we, I don't really want to go there. And the manifestor's job is to go, I'm going to shut the door and get off. Like, you're not getting on my bus because I'm on my road and this is my path. You're either going to get behind me and you're going to, you know, be my, my GPS and tell me, you know, the quickest way to get there or help me along the way, or you're just not going to, you're going to get out of my way. So that's manifestors. Just one way. I mean, there's lots of dynamics with business, but that's, I think, one of the ways to think about it is like they're the fire starters, the people who start movements. Then we have generators, which is what Emily is. It's, it's also what I am. So I love that for us. Actually, what's your profile too? We'll dive into profile because I think profile is huge in business as well. You're two four. Oh, I love that. Of course, we love each other. We're both generators. So type attracts type. And then there's this piece of human design called your profile, which is like this fraction number. I'm a five one, you're two four. And five ones and two fours are actually harmonious. So you may find that you have a lot of five ones in your life. And I know that I have a lot of two fours in my life. And that's just a it means that you'd be really great friends or you'd work really well in relationship. There's just like a good energetic dynamic. So how funny is that? So cool. We'll dive into that in a minute. But so moving into generators. So generators are the life force. They are called the builders. That's sort of their career role, if you will. They are people who have this built-in energy to get things done. Now, generators make up most of the population, and a lot of generators are working against their energy and they're super drained. So a lot of times I talk to generators and I'm like, you're the life force. You have the sparkly, radiant energy of energy to go and do things. And they usually tell me, I don't feel that way. I'm drained every day. I don't love what I'm doing and I don't feel excited. I don't have the satisfaction that I'm supposed to have as a generator. And that's because a lot of generators are doing things they hate. And so they don't feel like they have the things to the energy to go after what they want. And so a generator's lesson is to do what they love. As simply as that sounds, but it's seriously prioritizing your satisfaction, what makes you feel good. And knowing that it's important to say no. Saying no is so good for you. If something does not light you up, doesn't expand you, say no. Their strategy, the way that they work with their energy is to wait to respond. So in business, it can look like allowing yourself to 
not force things and initiate things and push things, maybe like a manifester would do, and more so allowing yourself to surrender. The Surrender Project, I recommend that book for all generators and manifesting generators too by Michael Singer, great book, but it's all about like surrendering and allowing life to kind of happen for you and just tuning into what feels good and lighting you up in the moment and going and following that. And that being the the way that you lead your life to your signature theme, which for them is satisfaction. So feeling really satisfied and when they're out of alignment can feel like frustrated, and frustrated and stuck, inability to move. They're yeah. always really warm and it develops around people as well. So like when they're doing things they love, people are going to feel it. When they're doing things they hate, people are going to feel it. How does that feel for you, Emily? Oh, that has been like the biggest <laughs> takeaway lesson for this year is just how much I have to lean into that. Yeah. On the other side of the retreat I went to in April, I had this vision for something I wanted to do and was trying so hard to reverse engineer it. And like, what are the steps? How am I going to position myself? What's the content I need to create? Like, how am I working towards it? What's the launch? All of this. And was feeling crazier than before I even went until my coach and I sat down and she's like, well, no wonder. Every Look at everything you've ever done well that you loved, that's been impactful, that's been effective. It has been putting something out there letting it hit and then responding and then creating something off a responded need. And that was such a light bulb moment of, oh, I can't do this the way that this person does or this person has been teaching me. Like The way that I did this before I even had conscious awareness around it is actually what has always worked, which I think is true for most people. Like If you actually look at when things have gone well, it is because you were without even knowing it, living into your human design. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and I want to talk about this, uh, this piece called authority here in a minute as well. Because that's I think that's something that you were saying to me on Instagram, you want to dive a little bit deeper into, which is around basically what your intuition is and like how there's seven different ones. But yeah, like one of the gifts of human design is saying you're your own guru. Like there's no person who can do it the way that you do it. And there's no one that knows what's best for you other than you, which I think can bring a lot of anxiety, especially when, you know, you if there's coaches and people you want to hire and there's people you seek help from. But I think it's just a reminder that it's good to get advice, but always to just lean into yourself and that you always know the way. And I know that like I've worked with lots of coaches and the people that I've hired, there's always moments that I have to kind of move through my own filter and say, does this really feel right for me? So yeah, so it's like operating in the way that's best for you. And so, but a lot of people are operating from a place of not working with their energy. And so that's where it can get confusing where they're working with a conditioning or doing something in a way that they've always done it before. And it's actually not leading to the success or the alignment. And so the lesson is that learn your human design so you know what that looks like for you so you can step into that. Oh, yeah. Learning to trust and lean into your authority or your intuition, whatever direction we want to go with that, involves a very conscious level of deconditioning, the programming that you have absorbed from literally everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. And even more so now with the internet too. Mm -hmm. Well, let's finish the types. We'll dive through, we'll get through those and then we'll let's talk about authority because I think that's going to be a really important piece, especially for business owners because human design returns the authority to us. Okay. So now let's talk about manifesting generators. So manifesting generators are somewhat of a hybrid between the manifester and the generator, as we talked about, where their career goal or career role is to be the efficient builders. So people who do things quickly not that a generator can't do things quickly, but they're they're commitful. Generators have energy where when they want to do something, they want to get it done. So you may feel like that, Emily, where you have a project or there's something you want to do and there's this kind of all or nothing mentality that or energy that goes into that project. And a manifesting generator is a little bit more dynamic where they are very multi-hyphenate. They, there's a lot of different things that they want to do at a lot of different times. And so one of their lessons is to allow themselves to pivot and to give themselves the permission to go after lots of things, even when it doesn't make sense. So you could be into one hobby or one offering in your business, and then all of a sudden you get an idea for something completely different out of the norm. 
not something even related to what you do in business. And your lesson is to to do that thing, even if it doesn't make sense, because there's sort of this golden thread that happens for a manifesting generator later where you see how everything merged together. So the advice to niche down for business owners sometimes isn't the greatest advice for a manifesting generator. So letting yourself be all the things and allowing yourself to pivot and and go fast and not feel like you have to be so committed to one singular offering or thing in business. And they get those creative ideas like the manifester does. And so that's where they want to go. That's where they want to move. Now, they don't have that initiation piece as much where manifestors have that energy where they want to kind of like make things happen. The manifesting generator has that built-in generator motor. Like when we generator, think of what that word means. It's like when the power goes out, you plug in the generator, right? For those of you that maybe live in the colder areas of the world, I grew up in Michigan. So again, that's something we had every winter, but a manifesting generator, they have that energy to go after things and sustain the energy of the things that they want, but then they also want to go quick because they're going to get an idea. So mm-hmm. when they're in alignment, it feels like satisfaction, maybe a theme of calmness as well, or peace. And then they, when they're out of alignment, it feels like frustration or anger. So yeah, that's the manifesting generator. And then we have projectors, which are about 22% of the population. And I should go through, manifestors are like 9% of the population. Generators are around 34% of the population and manifesting generators, 32% of the population. And then projectors are 22%. And then we'll get to reflectors, but reflectors are only about 1%. But projectors are our guides in, in a career role. They're like advisors. They're people who see things in an upgraded way. They are people who they they kind of pick up information from everywhere, um, have this energy that is they say it's penetrating and absorbing. It kind of like penetrates awareness. Like they see right through things and they absorb a lot of information and energy from the world around them. And so their gift is like guiding people from what they know. Now for them to work with their energy though, it's really important that they are invited in. So any projectors, like as far as business goes, like make sure there's, there's two lessons projectors desire so deeply to be seen. So one of the lessons is to plant yourself in places to be seen. So the internet's a great place for that. Lots of people can find you, share what you do, what you know, what you, what you're the expert at, what you've, what you've mastered. Projectors tend to be people who pick things apart and put them back together in more efficient ways. So share that, share your skills, not in a way that you're seeking recognition, but more so because you're just sharing what you know and that's where recognition comes. But then their other lesson is to not offer their perspective or force their opinion onto other people until it's invited in. So projectors, because they see and they want to guide and they're like such great advisors, they want to give their advice. But a lot of times in business and so with clients or, and even I would say with clients, actually there, that is someone who is appreciating and recognizing you and has already formally invited you in. But your strategy, it's to wait for invitations or recognition, to wait for people to, to want to get learn more from you. So the cold calling DMs, that is really bad advice for a projector. Don't do that. I would really allow yourself to just share what you know and let people come to you. The invitations will start flooding in. Also, rest is huge for projectors. So giving themselves rest. Also, I should have talked about that with manifestors. Manifestors also need rest between their like big ideas and initiations. They're not even going to get those big ideas unless they rest. But for a projector, rest is crucial. Allow themselves to lean into that. And because they get more done in four hours than they would in you know, a normal eight-hour workday. I'm going to selfishly ask this. One of my very good friends in business is a projector, and she's also a speaker and coach. And launches can be really draining. Like you said, pitching for speaking events, things like that can be really exhausting. So what does it look like to put yourself out there into those opportunities while still honoring that need for an invitation? Yeah. So I'll describe a projector I've worked with in the past. So there's a projector I worked with and she was a Pilates instructor. And so she was primarily doing like work at a studio with lots of, she was primarily just doing like the coaching through Pilates in the group settings. And something that she kind of had this unique way of doing Pilates where it was like different from the norm. And so 
she was trying to tap into doing more one-on-one client work, but she was really drained doing the group teaching at a studio where it was she wasn't really getting as much of that one-on-one work because she was really like overusing her energy because she was doing long hours of speaking and teaching and being on her feet. What she ended up kind of changing course to was she created an Instagram account like we all kind of do in business here. That's kind of the thing that you do now. And so she ended up sharing like Pilates tips and tricks and you know ways that you can do at-home Pilates. And she had an at-home reformer and she would show different moves. And so what ended up happening is she developed this ginormous group of really high caliber clients. She lives in LA as well, of people who found her and wanted to learn her level, her, the way that she teaches Pilates and her like techniques and how she does that. And so she wasn't going around like telling everyone, this is what I'm doing. It kind of unfolded by her just sharing about the thing that she's passionate and that she knows the best knowledge on, which is, you know, her at home Pilates. And now she works with, you know, celebrities and all sorts of people. Again, she's in LA, but like she has people who are constantly messaging her. She's got all these followers now on the internet and So, you know, that's like a one example, but there's so many. I mean, there's lots of different ways. I I also worked with a girl who was a harpist who she wanted to do that as like her main thing at weddings. And so again, social media was a great place for her to be seen for her skills. Of course, weddings, lots of times she was passing out her cards, but, you know, she was really working with that. I think that as far as like pitching and cold calling, I think sometimes in business, those can be necessary things like especially for PR or yeah, like sometimes you have to do that. That's how things operate in business. So I think my recommendation is for any projectors who don't want to like put themselves out there in that way is really showcasing what you know and what you do, sending examples and case studies, and then also like hiring help for those pitches. So it's not directly coming from your energy. Therefore, someone else can talk about how great you are and that might be a better energetic exchange. It's almost like creating the opportunity to get invited. Yeah, exactly. Hey, friends. If you're loving this conversation with Leah McLeod, founder of The Design of You, I have some exciting news to share. Leah is offering an exclusive discount just for Gather and Growth listeners on two amazing resources to help you dive even deeper into your human design. First, you can book a one-on-one human design reading with one of Leah's hand-selected experts tailored to your unique needs, whether you're seeking career clarity, relationship fulfillment, or even spiritual growth. Or if you prefer a self-guided deep dive, grab the personalized human design guidebook, a 95 plus page PDF packed with insights about your specific energy type, decision-making strategies, gifts, purpose, and more. It's full of journaling prompts, affirmations, and exercises to help you live in alignment with your human design. And here's the best part. You can use code GATHERANDGROWTH to get a special discount on both of these offers. So if Leah's wisdom is resonating with you, this is your chance to explore your human design blueprint and start creating the life you've always dreamed of. Just head to the links in the show notes and remember to use code GATHERANDGROWTH at checkout. Now let's get back to this incredible conversation with Leah. Projectors can do, because a lot of times they'll say, okay, so I have to wait for an invitation for everything to find love and to start my business. And the answer is no, it's only when you're working with other people. Like you can do whatever you want, but you want to make sure that before you're offering your advice, it's really invited in because every projector, their not self theme is bitterness. Every projector I know has had the experience of bitterness where they feel like people don't listen to them. People aren't seeing it the way that they do and they're trying to like get them to see it the way that they see it and get them to see them for who they are. And it just creates bitterness because it wasn't invited in. So it's it's really a strategy to conserve your energy, to reserve it for bigger and better things. And the sign that a projector is in alignment is success. And success is by your own definition. It's not always fame, money, fortune. Success can be, I feel really restful. I feel like I'm making a difference because that's what they want to do ultimately. Well, and a huge piece of that also feels like breaking down the expectation that there is a link between productivity and output and inherent worth. If like a core need is rest, then like that also needs to be a piece of the conversation. Yeah. 
Well, then lastly, we have reflectors, which are around 1% of the population. I hope a reflector is listening. I love reflectors. They are our mirrors. Their goal, or their, I keep saying their goal, the career role for a reflector would be to be the person who is like less of the advisor and more of the person who shows you like how things are going. They're kind of like the person you go to to get the temperature check on where we are. So they're the person that really focuses on like the dynamics of maybe like the team or the workflow, the evaluator, if you will. And so reflectors though, they're, the way that their energy is, is they're wide open in their chart. What I mean by that is they don't have lots of defined energy centers or like the shapes within your design. So if you look at a chart of a reflector, again, if anyone's watching a video, it's like wide open. And so they actually feel energy from everywhere and everything. And so for them, it's very much about emptying out, not carrying the energy that they feel. Mm -hmm. And also when it comes to decisions, they they go slow. They have to be really patient, practice self-care. Nature is really, they're tied to nature and the cosmos and the cycles of the moon. So really like tuning into those things. And so in business, this could look like not making a big business decision right away, like giving yourself, it's a 28-day lunar cycle, as we say for them. So giving yourself 28 days to really assess like, does this feel right for me? Planting yourself in environments and around people that feel good over that time period to really like feel into it, try it on over a month. When they're in alignment, they really like pleasantly surprise themselves. When they're out of alignment, they they feel really disappointed in the world and like themselves and they feel like lost and off track. But yeah, their gift is to show us like, how can we evaluate things and how can we, how are we doing as a group? How are we doing as a team? How are we doing in this business? How does it feel? So that's all of them. So cool. Okay. Then we were going to go into authorities. How is that? Is that the same as intuition? Is that different? Does it look different for everyone? It's different for everyone. So this is a really important piece. And I think it's one of the coolest parts of human design. So again, it's called your authority. So if you look up your chart, which we'll link down below if you haven't already looked it up, but it'll list it out. So it'll say authority. And there are seven different ones. And it's called authority because in human design, we all have this thing inside of us that's, that has the power. It has the authority. And a lot of times in life, we place our authority in our parents or we place our authority in what everyone else is doing and everything outside of us besides what we want. Or even we place it in our mind. And something that I'm passionate about that human design teaches is that decisions made from our mind aren't often the right decisions. They can be sometimes, but oftentimes we try to force logic or reasoning into things that there is no logic or reasoning. So we all have a decision we've made where we go, it made no sense. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't even, it didn't even seem like the thing I should do. And I, I just trusted it. I moved to this city. I said yes to dating this person, or I started this business, or I left this job, or I left this relationship, or I sold this house and all these things. Like we have so many stories and they could even be more minor than that. Like where we thought, I don't know why I'm doing this. It just feels right. And so that's when you listen to your authority or your intuition. And so that's what I, I work with a lot of people on is like, how can you return to that place of intuitive authority? And so, yeah, there's seven different ones. So if people could have emotional authority where their emotions kind of are the driver. You could have gut feelings. You could have instinctual, strong instincts. Your willpower could be where your authority is, your voice. It could also be in your environment. And lastly, it could be through your environment and also like connected to something outside yourself like the moon, which is actually reflectors. So most people are emotional. Around 53% of the population are emotional authority, which means that your intuition is actually within your depth of emotion. And so to hear your, in, your intuition, it's all about clarity because we know emotions can be charged. Like you can have, you can be emotionally charged in a good way or a bad way. And so for most of the population, it's important that they they feel their emotions and they don't make fast decisions and that they allow themselves time. So time is really your best friend if you have emotional authority. So really leaning into, it's healthy for you to tell people, I don't know right now, but I'll get back to you tomorrow. Or let me get back to you in a few hours. Let me feel into this. And really assessing, okay, where am I at? Am I at a high? Am I at a low? Do I feel clear? Do I feel neutral? Do I feel like I'm not emotionally charged? 
And that's going to be an indicator of like trusting yourself by saying yes or no to something. So really knowing that you, again, just have this depth of emotion, you impact people with your emotions and not making decisions from that place, moving through that and finding clarity. So sometimes people call it wait for clarity authority, but it's all about emotions. Then we have sacral authority, which is gut feelings. This is the second most popular one. Popular is just like the most common one, I should say. (laughs) That's what I am. That's what Emily is. It means that we have strong gut feelings and gut feelings work instantly. So instead of like someone who's emotional, who needs more time, people who have gut authority, they can really hear their gut speak in the moment. So Emily, like you may notice that when you're out and about, you know, we talked about your strategy. You work, by the way, your strategy and authority are in this marriage for everyone. But to give you insight, because I don't know that we'll have time to dive into each of those today. But so for Emily, like her strategy is to wait to respond as a generator. And so Emily, you may have moments where you see something and you're lit up by it, whether it's you're on Pinterest or you're just, you know, somewhere in public and you see something that just lights you up. And your job is to go, I feel like really lit up by this. And that's actually your gut. Your gut is saying like, ooh, like this is good for you. And by the way, generators, some generators have emotional authority. And for them, it's more so like they may be lit up by something in the moment, but it's still, it's good for them to give themselves a little bit more space before they fully commit. But going back to you, like having sacral or gut feelings authority for anyone listening, all and it's generators or manifesting generators will only have this one they'll just be either expanded or deflated by something. And so being constricted or feeling like a heaviness or like your stomach will hurt, that's an indication of something that's not right for you, whereas something that is right for you is it's going to feel really exciting and like you're going to feel like lit up and like your gears are turning. It's going to feel really spacious in your tummy area below your belly button. Then splenic authority or instinctual authority, this one is all about your instincts. It's like, it's similar to gut feelings where it's somewhat instant, but sometimes you have to open your awareness to hear it because the instinctual authority moves, it happens quickly. So you will get like an epiphany, a tingle, a butterfly, a taste, a smell, like it'll be something kind of like, it kind of washes over you and it happens quickly and it goes away quickly and you need to act quickly. Sometimes it's associated with safety. So when something's a yes, it's going to feel like, oh my gosh, I just know. And when something's a no, it might feel like a lack of safety or like a, you know, you need to move quick and this isn't right. And there's like, there's something doesn't feel, feel good. So that's instinctual. Then we have willpower authority. This is sometimes called ego authority. And this one's all about your desire to do something. So a yes for someone who has this authority will be like, I want this. I need this. It will be very like, I have the willpower. Like I want to make a promise and a commitment and it can happen quickly for them too. So it's a, it's, it's faster. And something that's a no for someone with willpower is going to be this feeling of like, I want to procrastinate. I want to make excuses. I don't want this. I feel like, like I'm going to lose a part of myself if I commit to this thing. So it can be like a, it can feel egotistical, but like people who have this authority, like it's good to be selfish. Then there's self projected authority, which I call voice it. And this one is all about working with your, working with your authenticity. It's like how, what feels true to me and how can I, and so their, their tip is to voice things out is kind of speak out into the world and hear how things sound when they hear it back. So voice noting and then like re listening to that, writing things down, reading what you wrote talking things out with a friend, not to get advice, but more so to feel how it feels when you say it out loud. Does it feel authentic? Does it feel like you? So this one can require a little bit more time is like, you know, see how this is feeling. Try it on. If you hear yourself this feeling inauthentic in the way that you're speaking as you talk about a decision, that's a no. If you feel like, wow, this is something like that feels like me, then it's a yes. And then two more. So then there's environmental or sometimes this is called mental. I reframe it to environmental because again, I talked about the mind being this thing that a lot of us make decisions from, but our mind isn't always the way that we want to, that's not the, that's not the place we want to make a decision from. So it's more about your environment too. So people who have this authority, their charts are, there's lots of openness. So lots of like non-defined energy. So they're feeling energy from other people. So it's good for them to tune into their environment 
it's similar to the self-projected. Some people bucket them together where like you want to kind of try it on and make sure it feels good in your spaces. So go to different places, be around different people. And then lastly, we have the Lunar Cycles Authority, which is for reflectors. And theirs is to similarly to be in environments, give themselves that month to really feel into things. So it takes more time. If you have to make a quick decision, go with what feels right in the moment. And if you can delay it as much as possible, but that's, those are all of the authorities. So that's your intuition. That's how you can work with your intuitive nature to know how to make a decision for you and just experiment with it. Try it out. Try it today with small decisions. What's for dinner? What are our plans tomorrow night? What do I want to work on today? Who do I want to have a conversation with? Like just work with it and see how that makes a difference in your energy and your life. And I challenge you to start one day and then maybe a week, seven days, and then maybe I'll do for a couple of weeks and maybe a month and then maybe three months and just see how it transpires and changes your energy in your life. I'm so glad you brought up like the way that we can do this in micro decisions because the number of women that I know who are like, I don't even know who I am. I don't even know what I like. I don't know what makes me happy. So disconnected from myself that like, I don't even know where to start. And so I love that you broke down each of these ways that it presents because a few, you know, I've released some different episodes around intuition and obviously mine is a gut feeling. And so I can speak to that and I have awareness that other people experience it differently. But even just knowing how you naturally experiencing it helps you dial in to those very small things to then really be able to use this to guide your business or your career or your relationships and beyond. Yeah. And it's so powerful because we often hear things like, oh, trust your gut, right? Or listen to your instincts or feel your feelings. Like there's so many quotes, it's conditioning. We see them everywhere and different points it might work for you and might be the thing you need to hear. But again, you are your own guru. You are your own expert. And so knowing how you're wired can make you become that expert in yourself. So you can go, oh no, I don't need to trust my gut because I don't actually have a strong gut. In fact, I don't even have a defined gut at all. I actually have to, you know, give myself space and time and feel in my environment or I actually like need to ride this out. Like it's not actually my first initial feeling. It's actually something that I feel over time. So yeah, it's very much like I, I think human design's a, a huge permission slip. Anyone who listens to this who's a coach, like I highly recommend learning human design so that you can coach people more effectively. But and if you're, you know, just with yourself and trying this, again, it's an experiment. A lot of times people will feel like there's this like it could be dogmatic getting into human design. And it's not, it's not meant to be that way. It's like really working with, it's it's experimenting with this and just playing with it and seeing if it helps. And if it doesn't, then okay, so be it. But if it does, which in my experience, I find that it really does help people see if it gets you to your next level, you know, it could be a game changer. So, so much of my journey this year and really going back several years has been this continual process of coming home to myself and allowing myself to explore the depths of my human design, curiosities, like things that I once never knew. So in the two years since that we have since we last talked, excuse me, what has that looked like for you? Yeah. In the world of human design or really just even beyond that? Yeah. Well, oh, I feel like there's so many things I could say. I think I've gotten closer to myself in the past couple of years. I also just entered my Saturn return. Anyone who's familiar with what that process is like, essentially your Saturn return is like an astrological thing where we, the around the age of 30, you like Saturn returns to your chart, which basically like takes you back home to yourself, but could shake things up if you've been away from who you are. I feel like luckily I did shake a lot of things up beforehand, but I think even more is sh- shooken up in my life. So I moved to California in 2021 and you know, I started my business in 2021 and went full time into it in 2022. And I've been here, you know, I, I had a dog, I got a second dog. We've moved a million times and, you know, and now I'm, I'm engaged. So the my fiance Xander, we're, we're engaged. We just got engaged a few months ago. And, you know, I entered my Saturn return and like now I'm feeling this like total shift in my life. It's crazy. Like I feel this softening happening in me. Like I really am excited to become a mom one day. And like, I'm really excited to 
build a home. Like I, I, I had an intuitive reading a few months ago and it would just give me permission to like feel the feelings I was having where this girl said to me, like, you're in this, she said, and I, she didn't know me, but, and I didn't share this anywhere, of course, either. And she said, feels like this big, like coming home to yourself. And, you know, and so I think that's been a, something that I've held on to that was in May. And it's so true. It's like, I, I just started eating the way that I used to eat back then when I felt my best self. Like I've tried, I've done all these experiments and tried all these things and I've deconditioned a lot. And now I'm like returning home to like who I really am. And so I, I listen to my gut a lot as far as my human design and how I work with that. It, it doesn't make sense oftentimes either. All the time, it doesn't make sense. I the, A small example recently, this isn't very revolutionary, but like just to give you guys some insight into how I work with it, like my sister, she's pregnant right now and she didn't, she had maternity photos and, or I took like her photos for when she announced her pregnancy. I'm not a photographer. I don't even like doing that. I have a, I kind of have a nice camera because like I used to record my podcast with it and I was doing her, you know, a favor and just being a sister. And I went down and she lives an hour from me and took photos of her and her husband when she announced her pregnancy, whatever they were. I, it was whatever. I don't really enjoy it. I don't really doesn't light me up. I'm a generator, but it is what it is. And she recently reached out to me and she said, Hey, you know, we want to get maternity photos again. Like now that I'm real pregnant and would you want to come down and take them? It was just so easy when you did it. And I've been looking at photographers are expensive, la la la. And I said, I like, didn't want to like, you know, I just didn't feel it in me. Like I wasn't lit up by it. I'm not excited by it. My gut instantly was like, no, because I don't, you know, it's just not my thing. So I listen to it all the time now. And and old me conditioning would say like, well, it's going to save her money. And she's my sister. And, you know, like, it's just, an, you know, I'm, I'm not bad at it, but I have this camera and whatever. But I, I listen to my gut now so much more. And, and even like when I was into human design, like it's still a process. Like I, I have to do this all the time. Like I'm not perfect. So yeah, I was like, hey, you know, I know it was easy and it would be nice. Like, honestly, I just don't, it doesn't really light me up and I don't really want to. I think that someone would be way better than me and it would be worth the money. You'll get really great shots, way better than what I can do. And it was good. But, you know, like that's just a small example. I just feel like I really tune into myself and now I'm just excited to, yeah, return back to myself and be like back into like my homey life and we're probably moving soon. Okay. Well, tell us about the new book. What's in store? Is it just human design or what else are you exploring there? Yes. So I am a huge lover of like dream life creation. That is like one of my passions outside of human design. I think human design has been my vehicle for that. Like I I feel like I live my dream life. And even though I want to shake things up a little bit right now, but like it's just like the dreams adjusting. So something that I like to talk about is that is like how human design really can like fast track you to the things that you desire manifest if you will right sometimes i avoid using the word manifestation because i think it can that's where it can get kind of woo but it's it's just means like how can you like if you have an idea or an inkling of like a life you want to live how can you make that happen that's the manifestation piece so if whether you want to call it like following your dreams or manifesting and so human design's been a vehicle for that for me because it got me out of my own way. It's like I now can tune into my gut and trust that listening to that, even when it doesn't make sense, it leads me to the right people, place, and opportunities. So I can say no to things that seem like they're going to bring me a lot of money or you know, that are going to help someone else or that are going to do things that would look right on paper. Um, And I can say yes to things that don't look right on paper and seem like silly or like a waste of time or energy or money. But I know like I can trust myself and that has fast-tracked me to everything. I'd explain what's happened in the past two years. That's because I work with my energy. There's really no secret to it. So that being said, the book that I just finished writing, which doesn't come out, unfortunately, until January, 2026, we have like a year. Yeah. I'm so bummed. It's so long, but it just means it's going to be good. It's also going to be super visual. So I'm going to be working very closely with a designer for a year. Like human design is super complicated and all the books that exist are like very mechanical and we're going to make it very beautiful and digestible and it's going to be a workbook. So it's, it's long story short, it's a guide to manifesting your, your dream life using human design. So it'll break down, you'll go through your chart and break down all the pieces and parts to it. And you'll have like little 
checklists and journaling prompts and like you'll be able to really like go step by step into your chart and there's manifestation tips along the way. So for example, for you, Emily, like as a, we didn't dive into profile very deeply, but like I have a manifestation tip in there for, you know, if you have a two in your profile to allow yourselves to know that your your gifts come effortlessly. You're kind of like a, a genius without realizing it. And then as a four, you know, to lean on your network and to know that like that's the way that you're going to find your opportunities is like through your network. So if any of you have a two or your four in your profile, there's like a little tip for you guys. Profile is like a great place to lean into for content as well, how you can create things. I've got some posts on that on Instagram. So yeah, it's this like step-by-step process book that talks about each of the different parts. We dive into deconditioning and just, yeah, how can you unbecome to, to become actually who you are and who you actually have always been deep down and probably who you were when you were a child that you kind of just moved away from. Oh, I can't wait. I wish it was coming out like January 2025 because you, I'm sold. Especially because I'm in the middle of it. Like, I'm just like, oh, the manuscript submitted. Now we're in like the editing phase where I have my editor making changes and we're going to be going back and forth. And so, and then I'm like, wait, now I have to wait this long. But I mean, we talked two years ago and I feel like I blinked and now I'm here. So I know I'm going to barely even blink and then it's going to be January 2026. And who knows at that point what will happen. Oh, so cool. Okay. We're coming up on an hour. I am confident we could talk for three, but for the sake of time. I know. I know. Would you tell us? I Well, I know. I have a million questions and I'm sure that everyone does. So if they would like to learn more from you, get connected to this world of human design, where would you send them? Yes. Okay. Well, my website's thedesignofyou.com. My Instagram is thedesignofyou. You want to follow me personally. I'm starting to share some more like ways that I use human design in my life. I'm Leah McLeod. That's my personal handle. So those are the ways that you can, you know, get connected to my work as far as like offerings and things. Like there's a lot of different stuff that we do. I mentioned I have my podcast. You can binge some episodes there. Uh, we did just pause it in August and I feel like it'll come back, but I think it'll come back in a different way. You know, if you're ready to dive into your chart, there's two kind of places that people go first. I sell something called the Human Design Guidebook, which is like a hundred plus pages uniquely created for you. Emily, I would love to create one for you if you don't have one already. I may have. I don't. Oh, you don't? No, I would love to offer a 20% discount to your listeners that they can apply to a reading or to a guidebook. So we'll put that down below and you can tell me what you want the code to be and we'll, we'll put it down there. But the guidebook great. is there's over four almost four thousand people that have one now. It's my most popular offering. So it's like this, it's like a it's a kind of like what the book's gonna be and more of a personal level, like this little workbook. And they're great. You can get it within two to seven days. We custom make them. And then we also do one-on-one readings. I am still doing a few here and there, but primarily it's just my my group of girls that I've taught. And there's a couple guys in there that we're hoping to add to the page soon, but book readings with them or me, and we'll do the discount code on that as well. And then if you're, if you want to learn human design, whether for your life, for your business, for like, if you're a coach or I mean, really any work, it can, if you run a team, anything, or if you want to become a reader, we have a reader certification training. Some people don't even go through with the certificate. They just want to learn it and move through, but um, you can also become certified and become a reader and start your own practice doing this as well. Or again, just for fun. And then we mentioned I'm coming out with a book in a, in a year or so. And then I am building an app right now. I keep saying the next cutting edge human design app and it comes out next year. So we don't have any dates or anything with that, but it'll be really good. And so I think of it, if any of you guys are into astrology or any of those things, I like keep joking, it's going to be like the co-star, but for human design or like the pattern app for human designer. I'm a big fan of the Chani app. So I don't know, kind of like an app to learn about your chart and to run charts for your friends and family to get quick insights, you know, to bring it to your dinner parties or your your gatherings with your girlfriends or boyfriends and just share with them all the things that you know about human design. Oh, that'll be so nice because I, I human design is definitely one of those things. You're like, oh my gosh, you have to look it up. Okay. what? And then you like pull up the chart and if you are not super well versed in it, you're like, Okay, you should take this and learn more. Yeah, you're, well, you're instantly googling that it. means, <laughs> and your story says, but I don't know what that means because it's just <laughs> listed here, but there's no other words and in, insight. Yes. Oh, that's so cool. 
Okay, Leah, question I ask everyone on the podcast is what does growth look like for you in this season? Slowing down, slowing down, seriously. Like growth is just tuning inward, especially it's because it's the fall. I think that just is a, always helps, but this is my favorite season. My birthday is coming up and I love it because I just feel like it gets darker a little bit earlier, which I don't love that piece so much, but like you just get cozier and you're like, I want to drink co- cocoa and I want to eat a really yummy like cider donut and I don't know, light my candles in the fire and just like talk and be cozy and warm and good. But yeah, like growth is just slowing down. I think that everything I've done in my business that hasn't worked has been things that I did too quickly or that like it wasn't something that I like gave myself all of the time to fully immerse and do it really good, you know? So slowing down and seeing how you can make things better. There used to be this thing in development that I used to hear all the time. So I used to run a development team in my corporate career and it was like, and I and I, I think it stuck with me and now I hate it. And it was like, you first you build like the, you have this, so it's like the skateboard to the car. First you have like the skateboard and then like, you, you know, and then it turns into a bike and then it turns into you know, the vehicle and like then this really nice Porsche, essentially, like you're kind of getting to like the greatest thing. And it's basically talking about like how you iterate and like you start small and you get, you know, bigger, which I think is a great advice in some ways. But like, I think as far as like business and offerings and things, like everything I've ever done where I thought, well, I'm just going to do it now and then I'll like fix it later. Like I'll just, I think when I slow down actually and really intentionally build something that I feel really good about, those are the best things. So yeah, slowing down. I don't know. That was a long way of (laughs) A long-winded answer, but see, and the longer I take on something, the more I actually go insane. Yeah. (laughs) But I do also resonate with the slowing down. And, you know, for a really long time in my life, I hated winter because I just like love warm sunshine. Mm -hmm. But over the past couple of years, I've really come to embrace the seasonality that comes with the process of wintering and how we need that in within ourselves and obviously like within the natural world and like the more... I'm starting to understand myself, my human design, and like how that relates to this world we were created to be in. And as we give ourselves permission to go through the seasonality of life is so much healthier than this expectation of it always being summer. Yeah, I 100% agree. And there's a book on that. Have you read the book Wintering? I haven't read it, but I know like it's a really like popular one and a lot of people in human design love it. No, but have you read Regenerative Business? Because that's another really good one about aligning your business with natural cycles. So good. I should read that. I think I would love that. You would. Adding to my list. Yeah, my and my list that just keeps listing. I know. I have like (laughs) book list that's like miles long. I'm like, one day I'm gonna read all of them. And I like I'm not very much of a reader. I'm trying to be. That's actually one of my goals, but I gotta get off my, my phone, you know? I totally get it. That's a whole other conversation we could go into. (laughs) Totally. All right, my friend, thank you so much for your time and your wealth of knowledge. I'm just so grateful to know you. Oh, thank you, Emily. I'm grateful to know you. And like, seriously, if anyone has any questions on human design, there's so many things we could go into. But yeah, I'm really excited to just bring a new lens to it all. And thank you so much for having me here and much love. Hmm. Same to you. And for anyone listening, if there's something in this episode that was helpful, Lee and I would both appreciate you sharing it with your network, whoever you are connected to, whether it's on social or in a DM, in a text message, because that's how we get the word out about things like this and help more people in our lives really, truly know, love, and trust themselves and be able to come home to who they really are. Yeah. How we change the world. Have I told you today how much I appreciate you? I'd like to imagine this was a meaningful backyard patio kind of chat between friends sipping LaCroix at sunset. If you enjoyed today's show, please take a screenshot to share or forward this episode to a friend. You can also find me at Emily Rushel over on social to continue the conversation. It's truly a joy to hear what tidbits and takeaways made an impact on your day. As always, all links and resources mentioned in today's episode can be found in the show notes listed below or over at emilyrushell.com. Special thanks to my podcast manager, Jill Carr, for the time and love she puts into producing Gathering Growth for this community. What a blessing it is to be on this personal growth journey together. Forever grateful for you.